Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today, we're going to look at a question from Jeff Parker, AC2AU, that he's having a weird problem with his radio. Now, he doesn't say what his radio is, unfortunately, so I can't comment on that. There are so many kinds of radios. He says, why is my power out on different SSB uh, bands different from frequency to frequency? For instance, my meter peaking at 40 watts on 20 meters, but peaking at 60 or more watts on 40 meters. By the way, love your channel. You are a consummate teacher. Well, thank you very much, Jeff. I appreciate that. Let's think about radios just for a minute. A radio has got all kinds of tuned circuits in it. I am assuming, since you don't mention 100 watts here, that you're not talking about a new 100 watt radio, which has very consistent output across all bands, but an older radio, maybe even a tube radio, okay? And the thing that affects it is you've got your, uh, I'll put a, a tube up here, um, oscillator going to the transmitter, going to, I assume you've got some sort of a power meter to your antenna. Now, every time you change the band, you change coils in here, in here, in here. There's usually several stages in here that you go through. And if you look at the um, way these coils are set up, each band in the tube radio has to be uh, tuned or set up rather. Uh, you know, prior to use, it, you go through a tuning of the radio and each one of the bands has its own coils, okay? Sometimes instead of uh, coils where you uh, adjust a knob on a coil, you might have a ferrite core that goes in or out that changes the frequency of that. Um, if you have a very old radio and you've been uh, doing this for a while and you've had this problem, uh, the radio works, but it needs to be tuned. And, and not tuning as in the front tuning knob, but the whole radio tuned as, as in setting it up. Now, older radios tend to be a little worse on the higher frequencies, like 10 meters and so on. They're not so good at that especially if there are less expensive radios. And so you'll need to make a difference that way. Now, there are other radios, like for example, I have an HF SIGS um, a micro BITX Model 6. And the thing puts out different uh, power on each band. It's got several bands and it puts out different power on different bands. Now. The way that works is because there are different tuned circuits for each band. In addition to a coil, there's a little tuning capacitor. They're usually little squarish things. I'll show you here. They look like uh, this. There's a, that's the slot for the screwdriver. That's often a piece like this. And by tuning that screw, you are allowing a plate to come up and away from another plate. And so that's how you tune it. So it's very possible on older radios, expected in fact, that when you um, use it, the tuning is going to be different on each band. I'm not talking about frequency. I'm talking about how well each amplifier, each step, each mixer properly resonates with each other on a particular band. So that may be something that you have to check on. If it is a radio like the, um, like the HF SIGS uh, 
radio, you'll note that there are multiple coils in there, some for each band. You can sit there and actually move those coil windings further apart and closer together to get the radio to work very well uh, on each band to work equally well. I've got bands on there that have two watts out, others that have six watts out, uh, it should be 10 watts out on all bands, but I haven't gone in to play with the toroids in there uh, to make that thing work well. But just want to let you know that there are, in a lot of radios, a separate pathway through the radio for each band. Until you get to the final mixer, where everything comes together for the right frequency to go out, okay? So that's on older radios or anything that might treat each band um, a little differently. Uh, some radios have taps on different coils so that when you turn the radio to a different band, you get a, a different tap on that coil. Those sometimes can be adjusted um, if this is a modern radio, like uh, an ICOM 7300 or something like that, it should not be doing that at all because, first of all, it's an SDR. It's not even a super hat, so you don't have all the coils and stuff. It's all done digitally. And the nice thing about being done digitally is if it works on one band, it works on all the bands. There's only one crystal in that thing of importance. Uh, this one for the clock, but there's uh, one crystal of importance. And every frequency that's needed in the entire radio spectrum is derived from that one crystal. Okay, so if it works at all, it should work um, everywhere. So I don't know what type of radio you have, Jeff, but there are some things uh, that could uh, go wrong um with different kinds of radios just because on the old super het design whenever you change bands you change coils uh in the if chain and rf chain and uh, some of those can be a little less in tune than others now tuning a radio which is a tube radio or one of the older transistor radios tuning the radio requires that you have a signal generator and really know how to do it. It is not something to just experiment with. Have one of the old guys at the club uh, tell you what to do so you'll know what you're doing. If you do it right, it can really help. Now, why would you have to do this at all with an old radio? The reason is because with time, especially the components that were used in the 50s and 60s, with time, the value of the components changes. And so therefore, the resonant frequency changes. So therefore, the adjustment needs to change. That's why. So um, there you have it. I'm just going to start this thing up here. I want to introduce a new feature of this channel. My study here is filled with books and gadgets I've accumulated from having this channel, and it's time to thin the herd, so to speak. I'm announcing my first giveaway to hams, and this is for the USA because postage rates elsewhere are really high. The item to be given away this time is this book. It's called Novel Antennas, and it's from the Radio Society of Great Britain. It's got some really interesting stuff in it. I picked it up at Dayton. Now, here's how the giveaway works. They'll all work this way. It's totally free to you, except for the postage. Here's how the giveaway works. It's totally free to you. Send a postcard, QSL card, or simple one-page letter by snail mail to P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. On whatever you send, make sure to include the giveaway number. In this case, it's number one. Your name, call sign, and shipping address. Please include your phone number in case I have questions. Please nothing else. 
Though if you want to send a picture of you in your station, I may be able to show those during the live stream. Electronic submissions will not be accepted. The drawing will take place on the live stream held on Thursday evening U.S. time on August 26th. So it's coming up. Note that I pay the book shipping to you. So it's all totally free to you. I hope to do something like this every month. Note that after the drawing, all entries, all physical entries will be discarded and no information will be kept or transcribed, except I'll keep a list of the winners here. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to dcastlercom support and picking a way that you find most useful. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. Don't forget to comment. So until we next meet, 73.